So in as much as like a store would give us that, I think that is the necessary piece, that there needs to be some middleman layer between companies who've got money and are happy to give it and the projects that need it, but we've got a coordination and a governance and a structure piece that's like missing in the middle there. It's also a bit, uh, because you guys, Tom, are are happy to give it, which I'm very happy to see, Mm. but there's two other companies that, that have stepped up. One is automatic. Like they can easily do that. But I think the WordPress world looks at automatic a bit too simply to fund everything and everything all the time. (laughs) And GoDaddy, which is a bit more surprising because I think the bigger problem with these things is that there is no tangible outcome. So it is maintaining the project, which is a lot of work, but it doesn't provide them with something that they wouldn't have if they didn't put that money in. And which is exactly the problem when you get to like stock market size because how do you tell your investors that you've put uh, 50k a year into something that didn't bring direct value to your business um, or that would have not had the same value to your business if you put in zero yeah and that's hard hey bob wp here and welcome to the wordpress way a do the woo podcast show I'd like to take a moment to share that we are looking for sponsors for the WordPress Way Show. If you'd like to get your brand out behind topics that are close to the WordPress project, hear the voices behind these projects, and learn more about the new WordPress Way, just let us know by visiting our site at dothewoo.io. So, on to the topic of today's show. Do you remember a post written by Joost de Valk about the PHP Sniffer project? Or maybe you didn't. This was a post that was written over on Post Status, their blog. In any case, I asked him and Tom Wilmot from Human Made to come in and talk about the ongoing concern about these kinds of WordPress projects and how we are going to make sure They are secure and funded for the future. At least get some ideas out there. So this is a good one. Listen on in. Hey there, I am here today with Yost from Amelia Capital and Tom from Human Made. And why we are here, it all started with a post that Yost wrote. I'm here with both of them to just touch on what inspired this, but we're going to really be looking at a bigger picture. And it was a <laughs> uh, post that was done on post status. But first, for those of you that don't know these two illustrious celebrities in the open source WordPress space, maybe we can have a quick intro for those few people that have just returned from 20 years in the cave in the deepest, darkest jungles. So how about we start with We'll start with you, Tom. Sure. Well, uh, so I'm Tom Wilmot. I co-founded uh, a company called Human Made in the WordPress space back in 2010. Prior to doing that, I, I was a freelance WordPress developer for several years. Um, Human Made is now 70-something people with, uh, distributed globally uh, across the globe. And primarily focused on WordPress in WordPress in like big complex enterprise settings. So uh, a bunch of like big brand name clients uh, that um, listeners will probably know, the likes of Sony and Disney and Siemens and uh, Harvard University, folks like that who are wanting to use WordPress. They love WordPress. They love how uh, flexible and easy to use it is, um, but they've got like somewhat complex environments, perhaps technically, perhaps from a workflow, perhaps from a legal, perhaps from a compliance point of view. And so they need some help to uh, integrate WordPress into that environment and enable them to uh, use all of the things that they love uh, about WordPress. I'm based in France uh, with my wife and two kids. I've been here for about five years. Um, and having kids kind of coincided somewhat with COVID. So I didn't travel as much this last few years as I used to. Uh, and so I've been enjoying getting back into that now that we're seeing word camps popping up across the world, very much enjoying getting back into traveling and hanging out in the WordPress community, which, you know, is, uh, one of the things that, uh, 
that was uh, very attractive to me right back at the beginning when this all started. There must have been something in the water because I think Yoast probably found it. I think you found it. Uh... I started the company Yoast as in Y O A S T in 2010. So okay. yeah, it's uh, yeah. Uh, exactly the same time. I think it was. Well, it's not in the water. It was in the ecosystem. We were all uh, starting companies at the time and starting to figure out how to make money with WordPress. Um, slightly different journey. I founded Yoast, became the CEO of Yoast because I founded it. Uh, after a while, uh, I gave it, that role went to my wife, who was far better at it. Um, so, um, well... We continued it in 2021. We sold Yoast. At that time, we had 150 employees, and oh, wow, well, it was quite a big company. So we were done with it. Um, uh, we sold it to uh, New Full Digital. Then we started building our own investment fund called Emilia Capital. Uh, we now invest in. On lots of different things, actually, but only in companies that we think make the world better in some way, be it big or small. But um, basically, we're trying to do some good with the money that we made. And a lot of that is going back into the WordPress world because we love the WordPress world. Um, so you might might know some of our um, uh, portfolio companies, as we then call them, now that we're trying to be grown-up investors. Uh, as Atarim, Castos, Extendify, Equalized Digital, uh, recently launched Personalized WP. There's a, so there's a, there's quite a few of them now, um, and we're partners at Post Status, where I did this post that we're going to talk about. Very cool. Well, let's get into that. So the project is called PHP Code Sniffer. Now, let's get in with a little context around what that is, the situation, and what brought you to write this post. So um, PHP Code Sniffer is a tool that I think every serious WordPress developer uses to check their code for commonly occurring errors that everybody makes anyway all the time. On top of that, we have a library in the WordPress world called WPCS, which might be a bit more known to people in some cases which is the WordPress code style, which enforces the way that WordPress core code needs to look, but that that WordPress code style has been adopted by, well, I think almost all of the bigger companies in the space as the thing that they use to um, check their code for code style, but also for, well, for things that you can improve in lots of different ways. So it's uh, Sometimes it'll recommend you to use another function when you're using a particular function because WordPress core has a better function for the thing you're doing. Or sometimes it will tell you, hey, this form you you're, you have here, that's all nice and, and, and fun, but you don't have any security checking on it. Or, hey, this string you have here is not translatable. It does a lot of checking like that. And I think that no serious WordPress developer should live without it and should just run it. And most bigger companies run it on pretty much every commit. So it's a tool that developers use and use a lot. Like, I'm not kidding. I probably run PHP CS automated in, in some way about 20 times a day, if not more. And and I'm not alone. Many, many companies do that. I know that at Yoast, they do that. I think Human Made uses uh, PHP CS. With, uh, so all of their developers will uh, uh, will you'll run it every day as well. So it's a tool that we very often use. And it's not just a WordPress world. PHP CS is also used by Drupal, by Joomla, by MediaWiki, by Doctrine, by a lot of these big PHP projects. And what happened was that the developer was building PHP CS, was doing that on a company account, and decided to quit. And that company decided also to not hand over PHP CS to someone else, so it became a bit of a problematic thing. Now, luckily, that's all been solved. Juliette, uh, for those of you who don't know her, you should look her up. She's one of the the heroes of the unsung heroes of the WordPress space, and in that she keeps the PHP of WordPress nice and clean and and helps running us on newer PHP versions every time and again. 
she stood up and she started, she has now taken over that project. And she said, it's all fine, but I've been running WPCS I've, and I'm now also going to be running this for so long and nobody's paying for it. This needs to change. And I think that that is a very fair question. <laughs> like, hey, y'all pay up for what I'm doing for you here for free. Um, but it also opens up like a wider discussion about how do we support the, the tools that we use that are not like the tools that end users may be using, but the tools that we use to build those, it's, it's this whole ecosystem. And are we even aware of the, of the fact that we're using this code? Um, and I, well, I think that's a, a it's a problematic thing. Uh, and I have my opinions on how we should solve this in, in an ideal world. Um, unfortunately, I'm not the one who gets to decide that. <laughs> But you get to you get to share that on the show. Like, so in my in my ideal world, we we would have a WordPress app store where WordPress plugins, uh, the sort of plugin repository, would not just be for free plugins, but would also be for commercial plugins. And we take a percentage of sales there and put that money to work on well on stuff like this and lots of other things. Uh, I think that would make WordPress better for everyone. We could enforce how we want plugins to sell their things and we can enforce proper all the proper legalities there that, that are needed. And we could um, fund the companies and the, and the projects that we need, that we all need to, um, well, to sustain our work. Uh, Human Made was the first sponsor uh, of PHPCS when they opened it up. They actually sponsored quite generously. Uh, I think it's, it's quite a lot of money. Uh, Tom can talk to that. But it's also like, in reality, if PHPCS wasn't there and WPCS wasn't there, it probably would be worth it to Tom uh, on a yearly basis to build some. Tom, I'm, I'm curious. With what Yost just said, the idea of the App Store, what I like about that is that, like you said, how do we get this in front of everybody? How do people know about it? How does an agency like Human Made know that there is this need until something happens like this? And then Yoast writes an article and then everybody makes this move and gets this fundraiser going. Do you agree that instead of individually worrying about our projects being supported, that an effort where something is being done and money is being funneled to these projects. Is that a value to you? And how did you as an agency decide once you saw this, it was it kind of like a no brainer of, Hey, we're going to support this, but you know, again, how do you find them? And there could be so many of them. You could get buried in hundreds of these projects. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I think that's the, the, the fear or the complexity, the unknown here that, you know, I think stops a lot of companies from jumping in and supporting even things that probably are no brainers for them. Um, you know, to some degree, uh, human made is like, uh, very aligned with contributing to open source. We've really grown the business like alongside the WordPress project. We've contributed a lot to the WordPress project. Um, you know, there is no, uh, uh, ID, you know, there's no, there's, there's, there's nothing in terms of our like approach or values that, that is like misaligned at all. Um, and yet even for us, um, you know, essentially takes me making that decision and, uh, and take, and to make it happen. Um, and so there is, um, you know, I think is, a, is, uh, you know, demonstrates the, the reality that there is no like systematic way for this kind of stuff to happen. Um, you know, it's true. I think that there are, you know, some large number of companies in the world who don't care about this and, uh, you know, aren't really looking for a solution. But even amongst those of us that do and, uh, do recognize that, like, we get a lot of value from, uh, uh you know, PHP code is different and dopey CS. Uh, we use it in all our client work. It's part of the like tool set that, uh, we use to build Altis. It's part of the tool set we provide to, to customers who host on Altis to help them. Um, uh, write kind of enterprise quality code. And if we w did have to build all that ourselves, it would certainly cost us a lot more than, uh, than, than the amount we're putting in. Um, 
Uh, and so that, you know, that, that really wasn't a no brainer, but, you know, it took this project getting to crisis and, you know, essentially someone, you know, someone DMing me and, uh, you know, a few of us, uh, were able to like hustle and make something happen. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I wanted to use human May's position in, in that moment. You know, we, I think we put in like a thousand dollars a month for a year, uh, as, as a kind of commitment to start. Um, and then we were kind of vocal about that in the hope that that would encourage others to do the same, which I think it did. You know, I think, I think that there were others then who stepped in as well. So that was great to see. Um, uh, but that's just like one project. That's just one situation. Uh, what about all the others? Um, uh, you know, it's not sustainable for, for that to work this way every time. Um, or, you know, that's only really appropriate for a crisis situation. And ideally these things don't need to get to crisis before, uh, before something's done about them. Um, so, uh, you know, I guess I think in some ways, you know, the WordPress project itself, you know, we, we, we have some solution to this. We have the five for the future initiative, which is like, uh, structurally tied into the project. There are quite a lot of companies, you know, that gives companies a way to kind of sign up and some structure around how they can contribute. I think, you know, uh, all of that could be, could be much better. There's many ways in which that could be better, but like, at least it's something. Um, and, um, you know, the reality is actually all of us in the WordPress space are using and relying on, uh, many more open source projects than just WordPress. And yet most of us are like, even if we're committed to giving 5% back to WordPress, you know, it's probably closer to zero everywhere else. Um, and that's also like not particularly sustainable. So I think, yeah, there's, 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 uh, I think some questions around, well, how do we make it easier for even the businesses who recognize the value of supporting open source and want to do it? Um, how do we make it so that they can say yes and do it? Uh, because, you know, the, the reality is as a business, uh, you know, m- most, co- most businesses beyond, a certain size just have fairly complicated internal processes around like signing off spend and what's that spend for and tracking that and managing it um and there's probably this like sweet spot ar- around human made side where like we're still small enough that i as the ceo can just go and swipe the credit card um and you know and it doesn't need to get uh uh wrapped up in a lot of internal process um so i'm, I'm kind of hopeful i guess of some of these projects that we've seen i think there's the um uh, the, the, I forget the name of it now, the community kind of contribution, um, piece that I think, I think is it Co- Courtney, uh, Robertson is behind. I think there's a, there's a few things like that that I've seen, which I guess are, are somewhat attempting to be that middleman layer of like, we'll help pull together the people who need money and put governance and structure around that such that companies can like click a button to support and don't need to build that governance and structure themselves. Uh, uh, and so in as much as like an app store would give us that, which I think it would, like, I think that's, I think that is the necessary piece that there needs to be some middleman layer between companies who've got money and are happy to give it and the projects that need it. But we've got a coordination and a governance and a structure piece that's like missing in the middle there. Well, it's also a bit, um, uh, because you guys at Tom are, are happy to give it, which I'm very happy to see. Mm. Um, but there's two other companies that, that have stepped up. Uh, one is Automatic, uh, who have similar, like, they can easily do that. Um, but I think the WordPress world looks at Automatic a bit too simply to to fund everything and everything all the time. <laughs> um, and GoDaddy, which is a bit more surprising because I think the bigger problem with these things is that there is no tangible outcome. So it is maintaining the project, which is a lot of work, but it doesn't provide them with something that they wouldn't have if they didn't put that money in, um, which is exactly the problem when you get to like stock market size, because how do you tell your investors that you've um, put uh, 50K a year into something that didn't bring direct value to your business? Um, or that would have not had the same value to your business if you put in zero. Yeah. And that's, that's hard. In a way, we should probably look at this more. And that's something that Juliet always uh, is talking about as insurance. Mm -hmm. 
we need this to be there, otherwise stuff breaks. I think especially the larger hosts need this to be there because if we all stopped checking our plugins with this stuff, they'd go absolutely nuts. Um, and they are the ones making the most money. I think there is, this, in the WordPress world especially, this, well, this almost weird situation where large plugin companies and like Yoast, um, which was, I think, arguably one of the largest still, well, still on their own at that point, uh, plugin companies, we made like 15 million in revenue a year. And that's a lot of money, but it's nothing compared to the hosts. I mean, the hosts are in the billions. And we really, as an ecosystem, or have not been good at having the hosts pay up for this sort of stuff. But we also need to make it easier for them. And my preference would be an app store because then it's funded by the people using all the software all the time and that would and that's easier. But it would it, we could also do it by having a, a WordPress support foundation or whatever we want to call it that they could put money into and that would then distribute it to all the projects underneath it. Because no, PHP code sniffer is not alone. There are quite a few more of these. Um, not all of them necessarily as important to us as WPCS and PHP Cope server, but, um, but there are quite a few. And I think that we, we need to figure this out now and we need to, and we need to stop figuring this out on a one by one basis when there's a crisis and really need to start managing it. And yeah, I think that that is, uh, I, 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 the, the problem with the WordPress ecosystem right now is that I don't know where to put that responsibility. We can ask Josefa to do yet again, that work too, but there's like so much as she's already doing. And, and this is a bit like, and, and that's where, um, that other word that we don't talk about that much because it, it's very unhealthy to talk about it in the WordPress ecosystem, but governance. And then I'm not talking about the governance beat above Matt, but more below Matt, actually. Like, how do we treat all of this and how do we get all of this handled? And I would love for there to be a bit more uh, of a person that runs stuff like this and manages this and supports all these people doing fantastic work because the work that Juliette is doing in this project is, is superb. It makes the project better every time she does an update. Um. And I think that that is something that we as a, as a project need to reward better. And we, we, it shouldn't be her work to then also go out and get funding. It's actually a waste of her time. And, and yeah, I, I, I have ideas, but it's also like, okay, who's going to do this and how, from where can we start this? And that's, it's actually hard. I've been thinking about this a lot and I don't have like the real good solutions yet. But I do think that attacking it piecemeal is probably the wrong way. Do you think there could be scope for, you know, I guess a broadening of the Five for the Future program such that it could also funnel support to these, like, the, the broader ecosystem of, of open source projects that WordPress, like, also relies on, I guess? Yeah. But under the Five for the Future program, nobody sends a check anywhere. No, sure. Yeah, that, that, that definitely is an aspect of it. Yeah. And it's also like the five for the future program sounds very good, but every, um, corporate executive who you explain that program to will just laugh at you because there's no way on earth that GoDaddy or Newfold or, uh, one of the other big hosts out there and they're, and these are big companies, right? They have millions of sites running WordPress. Um, they're not going to give 5% of their revenue to that project, even though I think that they should, it's, it's not a story that they could sell to anyone. Yeah. I, I, I do see that challenge. 
I mean, I think the insur you know, the framing of insurance is is true. You know, I think in practice that is that is that is what it is. And like some of us can like think long term enough, I suppose, to be able to make decisions around insurance. Um I think the strongest motivator uh is is like more reputational and and i think this is probably where the project could wield more of a carrot and a stick in terms of um rewarding those who do uh commit through five for the future or whatever else and uh making it so that there's a cost for those who don't and i think there is some of that that's part of human made motivation right our reputation and brand in some ways is built around the fact that we are uh, close to the WordPress project that we heavily support it. We can use that as a, uh, one of the advantages that we then sell, uh, you know, to clients that, that differentiate us from those that aren't. It does actually bring some real advantages. Um, uh, you know, part of, part of me like sharing it on Twitter and, and like calling for others is to, uh, uh is, is more call, uh, more, you know, more about, uh, triggering that reputation response or we want to be seen as a company in the WordPress space that cares. So I, I think that if, yeah, like, and especially through five for the future, uh, I think that there is more, there's more that that program could do to reward participating companies and, and introduce costs for, for those who aren't, which I think could motivate even some of those larger companies who like ultimately are getting a lot of value and would, you know, the cost of like exclusion would be fairly high. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I, to a degree, I think the only thing where we're asking like a lot of money from these people is in uh, sponsoring our flagship events. Uh, that's when you really see that companies are paying a to upwards of like a hundred grand to sponsor a, a, a single event. And people go like, but nobody's going to pay that. And then all the slots are sold. Uh, and it is. And it's clear that that's, that value is there for them. Otherwise, they wouldn't do that. It's that simple. I mean, it, it, it really, with the economy in the current state, it, it, it really is like if they didn't think that that would make them money, they wouldn't spend that money there. But that's also the problem. Everyone's cutting costs. Um, so we need to make sure that this is not a cut a cost that they would cut if they look at their, at their spendings because they realize the value of what they're, what they're doing there. And that's very hard when this is basically a free rider society, right? You can, uh, you can not pay and, and have all the, all the benefits of the tool, mm -hmm. even when you're making billions of dollars. And that goes for WordPress core and for so many other things. If I look at the WordPress core project now as well, there's such a large percentage of contributors there that is paid for by automatic. It's insane. And, it, and uh, we can't really blame automatic for that. We, we, we can only blame the large hosts who very often also have their own page builders that they mm -hmm. have teams of people running. Um, and then they have no one working on WordPress and, or a, a few people. And I think that well, there's a lot of these things that we, where we need to change it. And I, I agree with you. A, a, a carrot and stick approach is probably better here than, uh, than trying to well, sell it in other ways. But th there is something we need to do here. It is a, a problem. I think it's not just a problem with peach pcs i think it's a problem with more of of what we do and we need to figure out together uh, as a community like how do we how do we sustain sustain these things if you start looking at the javascript libraries that all of us are using to do things you'll find similar painful areas you, you'll get a headache anyway because there's a lot more and it's like it's incredibly hard to actually look at that. But, and that goes for Composer and for other things that so many of us use that, that none of us pay for. I, I think that we, we need to figure this out rather quickly before we run the risk of some of these things breaking underneath our noses. 
And the problem is we'll always solve it when it breaks right there, but then we have broken yet another developer who we didn't want to break. So there's there's the kind of um, you know, I guess, yeah, the the how how you sell the benefit of, you know, participating, contributing, supporting these kinds of projects. I think another like important aspect of this is just that that the the, the how that governance or works in terms of like deciding which projects are worth supporting how much each project should get like i think in some ways that is the you know we 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 to some degree leave that to the market at the moment which is that like the projects that everyone uses and which aren't you know uh, and, and and which don't have enough people to contribute uh you know eventually do get to crisis and then some people do step in and uh you know that somewhat works by definition because uh, cuz that is what's happening um, and that that is a kind of market driven approach, I suppose, to solving that problem of which projects deserve what support. Um, and I think that like that's the main thing that puts even a company like Human Made off from uh, you know who who want to support the projects that we're using. But like if I was to spin up a try and spin up a uh, a, a a process internally by where we were identifying the projects that we used, making decisions around how much we should give to each of them. Like that just becomes a pretty large, uh, and complicated, um, uh, kind of process. <laughs> I fully agree. In part, I'm asking for this because I want someone to pick this up and, and go right. do it so that I don't have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, and I think I kind of said a little bit earlier how you make those decisions. And there was a point where we had thought of, through our sponsorships, taking a certain part, creating this fund and all this. And anyway, I pushed it aside because there were a lot of people already trying to do this, whether it's, you know, supporting projects like this, sending people to board camps. I thought, why well, reinvent the wheel? But even as many smaller businesses and, you know, I know it's just a minuscule amount, but there's enough of them. And I don't know how many are like me. I, I want to do this, but I go to this project and I think, okay, well, what can I give here? But I wanted to support this person over in GitHub because I know they're doing really cool work and they're doing all this for free. And then there's this person here that wants to go to WordCamp that has never been and wants to speak. And so like you said, yeah, I'm looking at all this. This would be great. But how can I decide I would like to be able to give, a, you know, one flat amount of money and say somebody else has done all that work for me and they disseminate it out there. But yeah, I don't spend a lot of time in GitHub, but, but when I do, I end up start looking at all the, you know, can you donate? Can you donate? And I just get depressed because I think, you know, I can't just keep going from one to the other so yeah it's no it is hard and i i mean at yoast we ran uh the yoast care fund which uh, uh where we try to uh, at least reward contributors uh to some degree everywhere across the world and that takes a lot of time because you actually have to get in submissions and you have to look at those people and then and then decide who you're going to do that and they still run that which I'm very proud of because I think it's it's a very uh, nice thing to have out there and there and there's a couple more funds that we did at Yoast but we had the number of people to support that it's just it it, it it's a lot of work the thing is we did that because we cared and because we felt we were as we we were in some way uh well a bit noblesse noblesse oblige uh in, in that we well we were there we we were the ones making money in the WordPress world we needed to arrange this and give back i don't think enough companies do that in many different ways i mean for the large longest time yoast was the second biggest contributor to wordpress and it was by no means the second biggest company in the space, like not even close. And only when we got acquired, I realized just how small we actually were. Mm -hmm. I, I thought we, we'd be acquired by a company and we'd be like 10% of their revenue, maybe 20. And then we were acquired by Newfold and I was like, oh, wait, 
we're actually a lot less than that. And and that makes you feel very tiny, but it's also like it makes you realize that this world is very different than I thought it was. And I think that the people in the WordPress world don't always realize just how big that market is and how much money is going around in that market. And and that probably also means that if you start looking at that and who's make, making the money, that you also should be looking a bit more at the people making that money to actually fund these things a bit more. Uh, because, well, that's a logical like thing to do. And then we need to start thinking about, okay, but if we decide that we want that, if we want more hosts, for instance, to step in and start paying for some of these things, then how do we structure it in such a way that they can actually step in and that this is a story that they can tell their boss? Because it's not like these people don't have, these companies don't have people that work there that were, are very willing to do that. They are. I mean, Courtney is a great example, and she got uh, GoDaddy to to sponsor this. But you need someone to act who actually understands what's happening, and that's a big ask. Yeah, I think that that is something that where we ha as a community have to figure out how we do that. Um, in a way, it's also that we as a community have to talk more about what makes open source great. And 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 what open source actually is. It's funny we we talk a lot at WordCamps about how WordPress changed our lives, but we never, or as as much as I think about it, don't talk enough about hey, but what what does open source actually mean? And how often do you contribute back to something that is not yours? Uh, and I mean, a lot of people contribute to WordPress core and that's great, but if I can count the number of good pull requests on Yoast SEO over the 10 years that I ran that company, I can count the number of people doing those. Juliet was one of them, uh, but I probably two hands. And some of those people were very active and were great, but it, but it is like open source is like, it's more than, than just throwing it on GitHub. You know, I have this conversation with a lot of founders and a lot of CEOs of, of even just all the other WordPress companies or other agencies, you know, that been, been in this long enough now that, that I know most of them. And like, you know, none of them are like, don't want to do this. They all to some degree want to do it. And, um, uh, but, but it's like, okay, I want to do it, but then what? And mostly there isn't anything in terms, in, it's structured, uh, in terms of then what? Um, and so then, they're busy and their companies are busy. And so it doesn't get followed through. Even, even this, uh, you know, PHP code sniffer one, like the, I had that conversation with like five other enterprise agency founders, all of whom were like, that's great. But, um, but then it's like, well, where do I contribute? Oh, who is that? What about if, and you know, they've got questions. There's no answers to those questions. And there's no, there's just no like system or process around that. And so again, it, you know, so, some of us are just like, take the leap and are like i'll just swipe the credit card and, and like see what happens um but uh you know not many people are, are, are in that position um and so i think that i think that that you know there is actually quite a lot more people in the wings who could uh if there was just just the enough structure um to to like answer you know and answer the questions that they have like why this project and not another one what happens if like, I mean, a common one I hear is like, oh, I'm happy to sign up to contribute monthly, but like, you know, how, how will I, like, how long does that last for? Or what about if the project goes away? Or what about if the project like d gets enough money and doesn't need it anymore? Or, you know, there's like, e there's quite a burden you're taking on, right? You've got to keep up to date now with that project to some degree. Um, cause maybe that money, uh, isn't necessary in the future because, you know, or, um, or something else is more, you know, needs it more or. Just all of those things just start to turn the whole, you know, that already half an hour into that conversation. You're too, you're too exhausted to swipe the credit card. <laughs> and, you know, well, the, the thing is that, that um, to some degree, yeah. you don't want people to think about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's why we need something that takes care of this and looks at more and more than just PHPCS because it's too hard to think about. And it's also something that. Maybe you and I have the time to do, but if you run an agency with 10 people, then the chance of you having the time to do this is zero. Yeah, 100%. And you'd still, you still might want to contribute a couple hundred bucks a month to supporting those tools. 
Uh, but you don't want to spend the the headspace to uh, to think about how is this working and where is it going. And I mean, PHP Code Sniffer needs a bit more money still to I think to actually be uh, where it need, where it's at. It uh, they have a, the Open Collective that they have now it estimates that their annual budget is like ninety five thousand US dollars, which sounds like a lot, but it. It needs to pay for Juliet, but ideally, it also needs to pay for for her training a few other people, so that the bus factor of this thing doesn't it becomes a big bit, bit bigger than one. Um, and that's the problem for a whole lot of, of these projects. There's so many of these projects that we rely on actually have a bus factor of one, where if one person gets under the bus, the entire project dies. Um, and that's where the the uh, insurance part of it is is real. Uh, you, you need to take care of these projects because they go away if you if someone goes under a bus, um, and you can fix that by paying some money. Um, so in that in that case, it is insurance. But we I do think that we need it need to make it easier to to make these decisions, and we yeah, and we can't rely on people uh, having to do that on the on the, the for themselves. Well, because I mean, we just end, you know, that we, there's the classic uh, um, uh, problem in open source, which I think that uh, is nicely um, visualized by, I think maybe it's an XKCD or, or something like something like that, where you've got the kind of uh, one tiny domino piece right at the bottom that's holding up, you know, the, the, some huge platform. Um, and that's true for the individuals who are maintaining these projects, right? But but we also end up with the kind of corporate version of that, where there is actually like a, you know, like you say, Yoast is actually very small, and yet it was the second largest contributor to the open source project. Like that also is like, uh, yeah, it's kind of a, the corporate version of the same problem almost, uh, or the same the same visualization. Um, and so how we spread that out a, a, across many more people. Um, I mean, I feel like things like the WordPress Community Collective, which I was, I couldn't remember the name of earlier, but, but I've remembered it since. I think they do go, you know, that they do solve some of this problem. They solve the aggregation problem to some degree, and they do make it easy to say as a, as a company, okay, we're just going to put X amount per month in and they will worry about where it goes and, um, uh, make that easy. Um, and so it's good to see some of those things, um, popping up. Um, even like the scale consortium, uh, which is this kind of enterprise WordPress kind of trade body that, that we've been experimenting with this past year. You know, I think there's a, there's a role that, that, um, these kind of industry bodies could play to help aggregate together, um, you know, the projects maybe that we're relying on as an, as the enterprise WordPress space and help with some of the governance and the kind of, uh, collection of, of, um, and coordination. Um, uh, I think that the carrot and the stick piece, you know, I, I, it's hard to see for me, it's hard to see where that comes from other than, you know, something like a five for the future where the WordPress project has the power to reward and, uh, and introduce costs, you know, to, to like incentivize the behaviors that we want in, a, in our open source ecosystem. Um, and so. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't see where that piece comes from other than, other than from something like a, a five for the future program that's, that's like run by the project. I agree. Well, I think there's a lot of work to be done. And like you said, you know, it has to be done soon. <laughs> well, it, it, the thing is, if these projects break, we'll fix it if we really need it, which is true in what Tom said. There's a, a bit of a, a let the market decide approach. The problem is that we burn uh, people who are doing really good work in the process, mm -hmm. and there's not an endless supply of those. Exactly. Well, this has been great. I knew it would be great, and you didn't even have to worry about you know having anything or nothing to talk about. That's so. true. That's <laughs> true. All right. Fair point. You you are right. <laughs> all righty it's xkcd.com slash 2347 because i i i i, I it's by heart <laughs> yeah nice. yeah right that's it right, well if you're listening to this uh and you run any kind of wordpress company go to that look at it and feel guilty and they'll do something yeah, about it. <laughs> yeah. take some action to, to do something about that uh yeah if i can do one more more shout out that is 
it's still it's still opencollective.com slash php underscore code sniffer. Go there. Okay. Go there. If, yep. if you use it, pay some money. Cool. And if anybody ever wants to talk to you, either one of you about this, or they've, you know, you've put a little bit of flame under them uh, through this discussion, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm more than happy to chat about this, you know, especially to like business owners, you know, chat, chatting about through like why we have taken the approach we've taken. Like it's common when I'm talking to other founders or CEOs is that they they kind of have this framed backwards that like you know may, they have maybe some some point in the future once we are successful and we're making enough money that you know then we'll be able to contribute back and they think to some degree that that human made is doing it from that position that we've been very fortunate and therefore you know we've got better margins than them and therefore we're like giving some back um but uh, you know, I tend to think the opposite, right? That that the, you there really is an opportunity, especially because not many people are doing it, to use this as a competitive advantage, and it becomes actually the reason why human made has been as successful as it has in the space. Like, I think I think there's a lot of truth to that, and so um, I'm definitely like happy to share how you know what we've done and how I think about that. Um, Twitter is probably the best way to get in touch with me at Tom Wilmot on Twitter or the WordPress course Slack. I'm also the same on there. For me, also Twitter, J Default, J D E V A L K on Twitter, and uh, Yoast Devalk on the WordPress course Slack or on post out of Slack. Uh, just reach out. Happy to chat to pretty much everyone who wants to chat about this. And to close this out, I'd like to thank Yos and Tom for really diving into this topic. And it's something not only do we need to be aware of, but also you need to take action instead of waiting till it's almost too late with a lot of these projects. And also, don't forget to visit the Do The Woo booth at WordCamp Asia coming in March. Or if you're going to CloudFest in Germany in March, find us there and we can do a podcast. So until next time, there's so many people and projects in this space that need our support. Let's figure out a way to make it happen. Cheers. Cheers.